Hollywood, the media, and certain types of folks out there cannot stop attacking the Sonic movie. Now, it was interesting to speculate as to why, and I think that this article actually gives the game away. Paramount's decision to redesign the character paid off, but how much say should audiences have on the creative process? Basically, they're saying in this that fans were listened to. They were given a product that they liked, they reacted positively, positively to it, and it made a lot of money. Now this, it flies in the face of every narrative they've put out, and we're going to discuss that in just a moment. I think that this is beautiful too, because this is synth and reeling, showcasing that all the buzzwords and all those pulpits, they'll make you broke, but this, this might actually make you money. Hey there, so today I want to return to that wonderful world of irony, and this is indeed ironic, don't you think? When I'm talking about Sonic movie too. I want to talk about three things here. Number one, I want to talk about this fan reaction they're discussing and how they're saying that fans, they shouldn't be listened to. We know why that came up too, but I'll mention that very briefly. Number two, I want to show you how our betters out there consider a movie like Sonic when we talk about, say, a Rotten Tomatoes and the scores from critics versus the scores from those very fans they're talking about. Number three, I want to say what this actually equates to when we're talking about finances because that is the end game actually making money Now, as far as Sonic the Hedgehog listening to fandom, well, here you go. Here's a recap. It was spring of 2019, and the internet was still abuzz over the adorableness of Detective Pikachu. Then came the Sonic trailer. There had been rumors, of course, reactions from cinema conventions, silhouettes of theater standees, and leaked images that some swore, even prayed, were fan-made. But it was all real, and to see it in motion was something else. The first trailer for Sonic was It wasn't just a trip to the uncanny valley. It took us all the way down into the uncanny cavern. The response from fans and non-fans was immediate and loud. And Paramount, filling its uh, would-be franchise, would be DOA, pushed the release date and had the V. FX team redesigned Sonic with an appearance far closer to that of the Sega games. That's the power of the internet, the power of fandom. And then this asks the question, that's the power of the internet, the power of fandom. But where do we draw the line between artistic vision and fan approval? And what's the cost of either side winning? First thing they do is insult Sonic by saying that it is a limited niche appeal intellectual property. And then they follow this up by talking about items like Chris Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, Transformers, saying that people were complaining about those things, while unironically not getting that this stuff, it was based on products that would have had niche appeal the way that they're describing this too. Now what's interesting as they go through all of this is they do minimize the things they talk about. Like say they discuss Terminator. This is the entirety of what they say about Terminator here. Too. Sometimes it doesn't, like the five attempts across film and television to follow James Cameron's T2 Judgment Day. They don't mention the movie that cost $130 million in failure. They don't mention how fans didn't want that. And they don't mention movies like, say, Ghostbusters 2016. They just leave that out when fans are saying something about it. Apparently, we're supposed to forget insult and on. Speaking of insult, or the lack thereof, you also have people attached to Sonic the Hedgehog that really wanted this stuff to succeed. Sonic the Hedgehog director, he was so relieved when fans embraced the redesign. He was the person that went out and said, hey, let's spend more money. He was the person that wanted to listen to fandom, and hey, he didn't go out and insult when people spoke up. Jim Carrey did the same thing too, saying he was going to give up divisive rhetoric, saying he was actually going to play things as escapist media, going out and letting people enjoy what they were seeing. And you know what? It worked. In interviews and beyond, people tried to mess him up, but he he stayed on target. He stayed on task, and that, I mean, you can see it in the end result. Now, your betters, of course, those people that know so much about movies, they vehemently disagree with audiences about what this movie entails. You can see that in the scores in front of 
review. Audience score now up to 8,850. Ratings is at a 94%. Just came down from a 95%, but is still holding very well. While the tomato meter for the critics out there is at 63%. Now, what's telling about critics here is they want something that quote-unquote takes chances, and they complain about it not doing so. Sonic the Hedgehog, it isn't a movie. It's a 99-minute monstrosity made by corporations for other corporations. The epitome of a soulless studio product, a paint-by-numbers action comedy that feels like reheated leftovers of an early 2000s buddy comedy. The kind of empty calories that fattens up the audience before leading them to the slaughter. Sonic having human teeth and white hands were the least of the film's problems. Not even going out and giving you a review there. Seeing Jim Carrey back in action made me realize I didn't really miss him. Written by Patrick Casey and Josh Miller, apparently when they were in sixth grade, the story is basic and the jokes are corny as The adaptation of the popular Sega video game doesn't take any chances. It's fine fare for kids that don't make parents want to flee the theater. Now, one thing to remember with all of those folks is they don't pay to go see the movie, or at least most of them don't. They're critics. They get in for free. So let's see what paying audiences actually say. Now, I want you to notice something about this. I'm taking these in order, and look at all the positive reviews that drop in. The movie movie was family friendly but still included sly adult humor. Actors were amazing and hilarious. My son waited forever to see it and was absolutely impressed. Very good movie, worth watching more than once, so they would pay more than one time. I just finished watching the movie, and I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected. Go see this movie if you were ever a fan of the game. Me, my husband, and four-year-old all loved it. We laughed and cried. You name it. Jim Carrey was great, super cute movie. Would recommend. Definitely an awesome movie. Can't wait to see part two with Tails. We liked is a good movie. What I liked the most about the movie was the comedy and the storyline. was great for both me and my son. If you grew up on Sonic, you'll love this. Jim Carrey was great. Marsden was uh, perfect as always. And Sonic himself was awesome. I really liked the movie, especially that I grow up playing the game. I thought they did a good job with this, and I can't wait to see another come out. That's an entire page of reviews there, skipping nothing, no filtering or anything, showing you paying audiences absolutely love this thing. And the final tally for this movie, it has absolutely blown everyone away. Looking at the popularity here, you can see, first of all, that this has a production budget of $90 million. To break even, we're talking around $180 million. And already, we see a domestic box office of $58 million, international box office of $43 million, for a worldwide box office of $101 million on a movie so many people were saying would turn in and tune out really, really fast. Moreover, if you look at the box office numbers here, you'll notice this jump by leaps and bounds. $3 million preview opening. For this, that was an absolute gold mine. But then the rush comes in. You can see how much money it makes day to day. I mean, these numbers, like I say, they are absolutely insane. The international audience, too. I mean, you see this landing with Mexico has almost $7 million earned there. Australia, you have around 2.5, and so on. You'll have more detailed numbers as everyone else parts in. And remember, this is without heavy openings in China. So, if we see that on the back end of this, imagine how well that'll do. So, of course, we have headlines by the media saying, don't listen to fans because those folks, they no longer control the narrative. If you look at what the real money is out there, it isn't in something like, say, a Birds of Prey, where you go out and give someone a product they don't want. No, it's in that product they want to score and say is unsuccessful, the product they say is quote-unquote safe, the product you and I want to see and that brings everyone in. Fun, 
escapism, something that doesn't take to the pulpit and bludgeon us with buzzwords, something we can all enjoy, something that they cannot market the way they want to market because it takes away current year. But anyway, you tell me what you think about this and ha 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 to them. I hope we see success and I hope we see more and more of it like this. I want to end this too by saying thank you for showing up. I appreciate you doing so. I don't want to monopolize your time in doing this. I I don't hear enough people say this, though, and you make this stuff work. You always empower endeavors by showing up. You, just like with Sonic, make anything work. If you want to support the channel, you can subscribe to it, share videos, you know, help this grow, and thank you. I do appreciate you being here. I won't take up any more of your time except to say that we do this every day, sometimes twice a day. So check out our videos, and again, thank you.